Hello everybody, I'm Jeff and this is the module on aligning assessment with course objectives in the Cape Breton University University Teaching Program. The purpose of these videos is to make sure that everybody is on the same page with some basic ideas and terminology. And then during the live synchronous session, you'll break into groups with other faculty to do work on your course plans and to give each other feedback on them. We're going to start out in this lecture looking at goals and objectives. Lecture two will look at Bloom's taxonomy, which is a way of thinking about what we are asking students to do. Lecture three will look at differences between formative and summative assessment. And finally, in lecture four, we're going to connect everything together. One of the first things to know about objectives is that it's really good to tell your students what the objectives are of a lesson. So here are the objectives for this lesson. And notice that the idea here is that by the end, you will have the rough outline of a course, including assessment methods. Some of you are probably impatiently tapping your toes and saying, wait a second, when are we going to get to talking about online teaching? This workshop is going to be pretty general. It'll apply equally to online and face-to-face -face teaching. But given the challenges of online assessment, it's even more important to carefully think about assessment methods when designing online courses. So these overall ideas of course design are an important first step. The plan for your course that you have out of this workshop will be rough, and in the coming weeks as you learn more about online teaching, you'll need to refine it. In everyday speech, we tend to use the words goals and objectives to mean more or less the same thing. But in course design, there's a distinction made between these two terms, and the distinction is useful. Goals are broad and general. Objectives are precise and achievable, and they're about action, whereas goals are intentions. Goals are ways that you hope your students will develop or change. They could be things that you want them to learn, or if you're more ambitious, perhaps changes to their behaviors or attitudes. But objectives are things that students will be able to do as a result of the learning. Since goals are about things that happen inside your students' heads, they're usually not measurable, unless you're telepathic. If you're not telepathic, you need objectives which have to do with things your students do so that they're measurable. Some of you, particularly the humanities folks, might be squirming a bit at the use of the word measurable. I want to assure you, I don't by measurable mean quantifiable. Perhaps assessable or maybe observable would be better words, but measurable is the word that's generally used. So when you are, say, marking an essay, you are probably very skilled at assessing whether a student has made coherent arguments and whether their use of language is good. That's measurable for our purposes. To illustrate the differences, here are some examples. Pause and have a look at these. Here is a goal and an objective related to team leadership. Have a look at these ones. Here's a goal and an objective that might be appropriate for many mathematics courses. And pause and have a look at this one. Here's one that perhaps would be good for a political science course or maybe a history course. Goals and objectives don't have to be paired. Frequently, a goal gives rise to many objectives. So, for example, this goal to do with team leadership would likely give rise to many different objectives having to do with different aspects of team leadership, and the broad general statement about students writing mathematical proofs can break up into many different objectives, which perhaps would be relevant in subtopics within a course. It's also possible for an objective to simultaneously be connected to multiple goals, though that's rarer and more difficult. Notice that in all the examples I just gave, the goals started with students will learn. Remember, unless you're telepathic, you have no way of actually knowing what your students have learned directly. You need, for an objective, to set a goal of them taking some observable action. Not all goals start with students will learn, but many do. 
but for an objective, you need things like students will state, students will calculate, students will debate, students will critique. Those are all good starts for objectives. If you are watching this video via a lesson on Moodle, the video will end and you'll then click on to the next page in the lesson, which is going to ask you a question, just to make sure that you're following along. The lesson will then take you on to the next part of this lecture.